Hey you all, my so hi to fellow dressmakers. You're welcome to another interesting tutorial. My name is Confidence. Today I'll be taking you through the process of making this beautiful ball gown for a child of two years. And if that sounds like what you're interested in, kindly stay with me. Let's get started. So as you can see here, I have my two nets. I have eight yards here. It's not the softest and not the hardest, but it's highly recommended for the ball dress. I also have this dog face that is not up to a yard, one yard is recommended and I have my clean ring. But if you'll be managing your two, that means you'll be needing this hard net or bobby net. But I won't be needing this because I have the right yard edge for the gown. First, we'll be drafting the upper part which is the half length. But as you can see, my fabric is already folded. The next thing I'll do now is to go ahead and mark out the length of the half length which is seven and a half and i'm adding extra one inch for sewing allowance that uh, eight and a half seven and a half plus one inch for allowance so after that i'll go ahead and measure the shoulder divided by two and i added half inch for allowance and the armhole i'm using four inches the shoulder is also 8 inches but I added half inch making it 4 and half and I'm using 4 inches for the length of the armhole. Next I'll go ahead and take the bust measurement of that armhole line plus extra one and half and then curve the armhole just as you can see here. And on the waistline I'll go ahead and take the waist measurement divided by 4 plus one and half for allowance. The bust is 21 while the waist is 20 inches respectively so for the neck neckline i'm using two inches for the width two inches and then for the length i'm using two and a half that is two by two and a half the depth of the neckline is two and a half while the width is two inches go ahead and slant the shoulder if you want or you can leave it like that because children's body do not need much contouring so i'll go ahead and cut it out now and use this to trace out the back but first, I'll be adding one inch zipper allowance for the back. After that, I'll go ahead and roll it out like so, and then place the front on that zip line. I'll go ahead now and cut it, except the neckline. Just watch closely. So after cutting every other thing, I'll just notch the neckline width. So after that, I'll come up 2 inches from the waistline, just like so, 2 inches from the waistline, that would be the length of the back neckline, and I'll make a V shape, like so. Now watch how I'm going to curve it to blend to the zipper allowance. Go ahead and do just like that, and I'll cut it out. So this part is done. Next, to we'll be cutting the peplum, the one that will be on the waistline. As you can see, my fabric is folded into two and I folded again, just the same way you fold to cut out your peplum. And I have, the same thing I have for the length is what I have for the width. I'll just go ahead and throw the straight line, because I don't want the original amount of this fabric to be part of my peplum. So next, I'll mark the length of the paper I'm using 6 inches and after marking that, whatever I have left is what I'll be using for the radius, just as you can see me do here. 6 inches first, then whatever that is left will be used for the radius of the paper and I'll go ahead and mark the 6 inches all round. Connect it like so and then this is why we did that because we want to have excess normally the waistline is 20 inches which is 5 inches but i have 7 inches meaning that i have 4 inches extra added to the waist measurement that will, i'll be using that to pleat the paper later on so this is it after cutting i'll go ahead and cut the lining of it and then of the half length but before that, let's cut another flame that will be the base 
for the gathers because i do not have enough fabric left the people will have joining now to determine the radius go ahead and divide your waist measurement by 6.28 ignore the 6.25 that you see there 20 inches divided by 6.28 will give me 3.1 i'll be using that as the radius but because i'll be joining on this extra allowance to join i'll be adding that to so instead of 3.1 the radius will be somewhat 4.1 i'll just go ahead and mark it out like so and after measuring it I have about four inches which is okay for me so i'll go ahead now and measure the length now i'm working with a length of 18 inches in total that is the length of this gown is 18 inches so i'll minus the half length which is seven and a half and i'll be left with 11 and a half so instead of marking that 11 and a half i'll mark 10 and a half for the length of this paper run. i hope you understand so i'll go ahead and join it on one side to make it a full paper run. Now to cut the gathers, I will go ahead and fold this to as much as I can, just as you can see here, something like this. So I have um, 8 pieces in total, which is 8 yards actually. Go ahead and fold it just any way you like. As you can see, the edges is rough, so I will take my scissors to make it smooth by trimming it out, just as you can see me do here. And after that, I'll just arrange it to be what I want. So after that, I'll just go ahead and fold it again, like so. Just go ahead and fold it because the gathers will be will be double and not single. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So I'll just arrange it, arrange it like so, and then I'll measure the length. I'm supposed to use the length of 7 inches but I'll be making it 8 inches. Remember, you will still be trimming out some excess. So to be on a safer side, just add as much allowance as you can. So I'll go ahead and cut it out. After that, this is what I have. I'll just go ahead and open it all up. So this is what I mean when I say the gather should be in double. You fold it like this, cut off the excess, and then run your gathers like that. Just it should be double like this. So um, if I measure again, you see that I have that eight inches. By the time I I finish running the gathers and joining it to my main fabric, I'll be left with seven inches. So I use that to trace out the second one. It's also eight inches in length. I'll just go ahead now and trim off the excess, make it equal and smooth, like so. You will agree with me that making children's ball gown, ball gown generally is stressful but fun at the same time. So, after all of that, we'll now cut the third and the final gathers. This one will be single. I'm gonna have to fold the two like so. And just like we did for the other ones, I'll trim off the edges to make it smooth. This is really important. So after that, I'll just go ahead and minus the half length of this gown, and then the rest will be the um, the length of this. Remember, our half length is seven and a half. I will now mark instead of that seven and a half, I'll just be marking seven inches. I'll be using the other half for the gathers. So I have eleven and a half here. I'll go ahead and mark eleven and a half all the way, cut it out. And then instead of folding it like we like we did for the other two, just go ahead and run your gathers single like that. Do not fold it. This one is going to be single. So for the paper one, I'm gonna have to cut the lining for it. I'll be using paper stay on the lining of the paper one only. And then for the upper parts, I'm using the same fabric for the lining too. So I'll just go ahead now, um, cut 
paper stay and then use my iron to gum it on the paper roll. Turn the neckline of the upper bodice, the front and then the back, just the neckline because I'll be doing it in finishing. So as you can see, I'm going to have to gum the paper stay. I will now take the main fabric and then place the lining on it like so. I told you I'm going to use paper stay only on the lining. Go ahead and uh, arrange it like so and then flip it over so that the main fabric will be facing you. So after that, I'll take my clean rolling like this and then place it on the allowance that I'll be using to turn the paper on and stitch it just just on the edges of the clean rolling. But before that, I'll take my paper tape to cover the the tip of this clean rolling because it can be helpful to your skin. I'll just go ahead and cut the paper tape as much as it can cover the clean rolling, like so. Then tape it like so. Uh, after that, I'll just cut off the excess on both sides and then again I'll place it on. You just notice how I'm placing it though, and make sure you give uh, some space before the uh, zipper allowance of the paper. On. And this is what the upper part looks like. So I'm going to head to close it, and I told you I'll be doing it some finishing because the big gear has to be comfortable in her dress and now for the paper line, I'm gonna have to join it like I say I would I would and this is what the inside looks like as you can see already attached hemming gum on the tip of the clean only just as you can see here so I made sure that the hemming gum is facing the lining part of this paper line. so I use gum first on the clean only before placing the hemming gum just like so see this part that is open i just apply just small gum like so and then place the hemming gum on it i'll just go ahead and flip it to the right side and then use hot iron to steam it so that the clean oil will go to the lining so it's preferable that you iron on the lining side and make sure you arrange the paper as you iron so after ironing this is what i have can you see how neat this thing is so i'm gonna have to use my iron to steam it to gum the clean oil to the lining part of this so without much stress you can see that the clean oil is already giving what it's supposed to be giving and as you can see on the upper part, the lining is excess. It's better for it to be excess on the upper part, on the waist part, than on the down part. Now that we are done with these two, let's work on the down part. So I, I'll take the paper that I told you that I will be joining. You can see the part that I joined. And I'll go ahead and come down by one and a half all round. That is where I will be stitching the first gathers on. And if you are wondering why I'm doing that, just take a look at the gathers, see how heavy it is. Imagine if I, if I have to place the first one on the waistline of this paper line, and then take the second one again and place it on the same, the same waistline. You can see how bulky it will be. Imagine one will be bulk, bulky, let alone two of these gathers. I'll just go ahead and take one of the gathers and then stitch it on this line that I marked here. Just go ahead and stitch it all around and I'll come back. So this is it after stitching. You can see that this thing is already coming out so well. So I'll go ahead now and stitch the second one. But first I'll be measuring the length of this so that I will know where I'll be placing the second gathers. After measuring, I found out that I will just have to come down one and a half from the first gathers. One and a half. I'll just go ahead and mark it all around again, just like I did for the first one, and then gather the second gathers. Um, stitch the second 
gathers on it and this is the outcome this is what it looks like on the inside and this is what it looks like on the outside like the ball gown is balling so you can decide not to cut your paper on as long as me as i did there just give some just measure what you know that will be enough for you but for me i want it just like this because it also adds to the fullness of this board dress now i'll take the gathers that is single the one that is single and then i'll be placing it on the inside of this peplum just watch closely i'll go ahead and place it on the inside like this gather it around the waistline and then take the peplum but the peplum will be coming just this place that these two steep gathers is sure you understand so like this i'll just go ahead and stitch it and then pleat it to be equal with the waistline remember the gathers will be going to the inside and then the peplum on the outside so this is it after joining it the peplum and the pleats this is so beautiful i told you i do not need extra stiff to make this big because i already have the right ear ditch so i will now take the upper part stitch on the waistline just to secure the lining and the main fabric like so and then go ahead and stitch it and join it to the down part of this gown just like so so by the time you finish joining you should have something like this as you can see i've gone ahead to finish the inside with lining i just cut the lining straight it's not flay go ahead and cut flay if you want and i also fixed the zipper just as you can see me here i'm sure you agree with me that this ball gown came out so well see even without it on a body it's standing on its own that's the effect of using the right ear edge for your ball gown so I'll see you in my next video. Be good. Bye.